cool. Um, another thing that I really dislike is, um, or I really discourage, is patching of the kernel in the Yocto tree, um, mostly because it makes the job of the kernel developers hard. If, if you have a bug and I want to reproduce it, I have to go and fit around with the Yocto tree instead of um, just building a kernel. But it's also, um, it's a whole, heap of, whole host of reasons that it makes it a little bit harder. Um, that bullet point about known offenders is is actually really out of date that needs to be deleted from this slide. Um, both MetaWizSpoon and MetaNTL don't have those patches anymore. I don't think MetaNTL does, does it? Who's an Intel guy? No, you, you don't? We don't do it. Yeah, cool. And, and MetaWizSpoon got their patch upstream, so, so good work to them as well. Uh, so the current status, we're currently based on 5.2, which is the current release kernel, uh, at least for one more week when 5.3 will come out next next weekend. Um, and we've got about 150 patches in the tree. Uh, they're, they're all over the place. Uh, most of them are in the device trees. So we've got a, a whole heap for the hope of lines of code for the new SB2600 and a whole heap of lines of code for the new Vuitton device trees that aren't upstream yet. Um, as far as drivers go, it's a bit of a smattering all, all across the place. Um, the the big subsystem that we still are carrying, the OpenBMC tree, is the Pecky tree, uh, or the Pecky um, subsystem, that's kind of a, a work in progress still. Uh, this is my favorite graph that I love showing my managers. Um, we started off with lots of patches, and we've got less. Um, I stopped updating it after 4.19 because it's just kind of flatlined. We, we've kind of stayed around 100, 200 patches, and lots of that code goes upstream, but then it gets replaced with new new work as it goes. So our steady state at the moment is, is around that kind of 200 patch figure, um, which doesn't concern me too much because the code tends to flow upstream, um, except for the, the patches that I'll talk about soon. So um, as I was listening to Chris's talk earlier, I rebased against today's Linux Next, or yesterday's Linux Next, not today's. And, um, Luckily, Linux Next is released in Australia by my colleague Stephens, uh, Stephen, so um, so the dates for today, even though he did the work yesterday. Uh, so we've got 75 patches outstanding. So that's pretty good work. Uh, half the patches that are in the tree have been sent upstream for, for the next going to release. So when 5.4 comes out, they'll all be in there. And and that's you know that makes me happy. So what do we got upstream? A lot. Uh, not worth going through at all. Um, most of the most of the code we boot when we run a BMC is in the upstream kernel tree, and there's plenty of. So I know that Romulus can boot without any upstream patches, and I'm sure there's a whole lot of other systems that can as well, uh, which is pretty cool because um, it means I can retire on a beach. No, um, it it means that there's less work to be done on on kind of just carrying patches from release to release, and more work that can be done on on making things go faster and cleaner and 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 all this kind of gear. Um, there's two two kind of patches patch sets that didn't quite make it upstream for for this release. That's the Pecky patch set and the um, the XDMA patches. Um, uh, hopefully they'll make five five. And the other one that I've kind of been perpetually at the top of my to do list is implementing the or getting the hash crypto engine upstream. Um, if you've ever watched a BMC boot, we we load the fit image. And then it does a, a char verification of the, the payloads inside the fit image. And that takes you know, a pretty decent amount of time, especially on a 2400. And their speed does have acceleration for that in silicon. So we could potentially take advantage of that. Um, if anyone wants to pick up that work, come speak to me afterwards. On the Nuviton side, there's a whole of code that's gone upstream in the last kind of couple of years, uh, which has been good to see. And then there's more, yeah. Uh, Avi uh, is, is, is going to add to my list for me uh, later. Excellent. Um, and, and recently we enabled one of the Nuviton machines in CI, which is good because, um, now we know when, when I break it, um, and, and a more to come hopefully as well. Something that, uh, I didn't know if it was the right thing to do when we started was having all the device trees upstream, but it's working pretty well so far. Um, I'm not sure at what point the upstream maintainers will go, Hmm, maybe you should stop doing this. Um, we're currently at about 27 machines in the upstream kernel tree, and I'm sure there's more to come. Um, does anyone carry their device tree patches out of tree? Boo. <laughs> um, send me your patch, Chris. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty lightweight getting in there now. Um, especially if you're using all the upstream drivers, uh, that there's no reason the patch you're using currently can't just go straight in. Um, yeah. So old patches.
um, this is kind of the, the naughty list. Um, the first two are, are owned by my colleague Andrew back in Australia. So he's going to love watching this talk later. Uh, the Maxim fan controller is pretty broken and and has some hacks in the tree that will probably never go upstream, so we'll carry that for a long time, unfortunately. Um, the one that we're all kind of interested in, but I think on the Nuviton side and the ASP side, is kind of this missed reg driver. So our BMCs, as you know, have a hope of registers all over the place for doing tricky little things that don't really fit into any kind of kernel subsystem. And we need some way of exposing those. Um, and currently, we have this device tree based kernel driver that exposes just any old register you want to user space. Um, probably not acceptable upstream. Um, we haven't actually tried, but that needs a bit of work done and, and something kind of created there so that all these different knobs and switches that, that we want user space to be able to touch, but we don't want you know to use dev mem can, can still be exposed. Um, the other one I was just talking about a few minutes ago was uh, SPI NOR. So we have SBI NOR upstream, but it doesn't have the link training, so it doesn't go fast. That's carried in the OpenBMC tree. And in between when we first got those patches in and, and when we wrote the link training, the upstream maintainer said, we're not going to support SBI NOR anymore. Um, Nuviton had a great time with that, where they wrote their entire driver, and then it got knacked, and they had to rewrite it. So that's not cool, um, but it is the reality as it stands at the moment. Uh, there's another subsystem called SPI mem that we have to rewrite the driver for. Unfortunately, SPI mem lacks the APIs for doing things like link training, and so they asked us to do that. And we're like, what? <laughs> We've already got patches that do it, um, and we just haven't had time to do it. Um, so if anyone wants to, to become the new um, A-speed SPI flash driver maintainer, uh, come talk to me afterwards. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be great to get that code upstream, um, particularly because as as the upstream support becomes more complete, people do take the upstream kernel and try and use it on their system and then wonder why it doesn't work. Um, I was following some of the 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 all boot work in on Slack the other week and and they were having troubles there and I think it's because they weren't using a patch kernel. Um, so that's SPI NOR. And finally, um, PCI, PECI, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, that one got knacked because Greg wanted us to use configFS instead of sysfs for the config API, uh, and and so Jay needs to to rework that or or, or something. Um, I haven't had a status update. Does anyone know how that works going? Any intel people? No. Okay. Yeah, we, we need to to get that one out because that's a big chunk of code that's annoying to rebase each time we go around. So new chips. Uh, I was over in our office in, in the Eastern States um, of Australia the other day bringing up the ASP2600. So there's a dev board there and all the snaky blue cables are the, the FSI debug link that we have for power systems we use for booting the host. Um, IBM got ASP to put a bit of our IP inside to, um, to do FSI and so I was bringing that up. But to get that going, I had to get the rest of the chip going. So um, we got the PIMMUX driver, we got Watchdog Ethernet, the SMP support, um, the clock driver is written, but not merged upstream. But there's a hyper code that will be in 5.4 for A-speed, which is cool. Um, Dev 5.2 has even more. And so that's what we're using to, to bring up a BMC card at the moment, which is all going well. Um, I couldn't sleep last night due to delta eggs, so I merged EMMC support. So now you can use SD cards in EMMC with the A-speed kernel, if you like. Um, and and because we didn't have hardware until a couple of weeks ago, we uh, added 2600 support to QEMU. So if you're using Cedric's QEMU branch, um, you can boot an ASP2600 with SMP, which is kind of cool. So what's upcoming? Um, the rest of the 2600 uh, will be on my plate for the rest of the year. Um, and once we've got that going, I hope to, to switch focus to do a bit of U-boot work or, or something, maybe all boot, no, probably U-boot. Um, a U-boot story is pretty sad. We, we've been using the SDK since day dot, and some of the Google guys did some some work in getting basic 2600, uh, 2500 support upstream, um, which is cool. Uh, late last year, we did a bit more work. We wrote an NCSI layer for upstream and fixed up the Mac driver and wrote a, a SPI driver as well. Um, and so hopefully we'll get them in probably early next year. 
and and then we can start using the upstream um, U-boot and, and get off our ancient 2016 fork. Um, the 2600 uh, A-speed rebased on this year's um, U-boot release for that. So that's at least newer, but it's still a whole heap of tree code. So we'll work with A-speed and try and get that in the tree. If anyone wants to be a U-boot uh, hacker, um, let me know and we can coordinate that work. Um, the other one is, you know, my perpetual goal is to get the patch queue down to zero so I can spend all my time running instead of at a desk. Um, running's my hobby. Uh, so keep sending your patches upstream first, keep getting in the upstream tree, and um, I'll work on getting that queue of old patches down to zero, and, and then we can all retire our features. So that's all the prepared material I had. Um, like I said before, hopefully that's jogged your memory about all the, the issues that you've had with working with the the open BMT kernel. So I'd like to have a bit of a discussion now. Um, if there's any things you want to talk about. So the EMMC support you added in 5.2, is it it's going to work for it with the AST2500 as well? Yeah, we've tested it on the 2500. It should work on the 2400. That's upstream in 5.4. You mentioned the uh, rebasing U-boot, and you, uh, as far as I know, didn't mention AST uh, 2400 in that in the rebase, and that is one of the things that is missing uh, from the upstream. So, in order to get to the current U-boot, would you drop all the AST 2400 platforms, or would you upstream that as well? I think the current plan, due to lack of people, would be to leave 2400 on the SDK and move everything else forward. Um, the gotcha there is the SDRAM training code. So um, Maxim from Google wrote the training code in C for the 2500, and A-Speed have written a version in C for the 2600, which is great. But the 2400 is a big question mark. So you mentioned you have 150 patches, and uh, those are not upstream yet in the kind of stable tree, right? Not yet. So and well, half uh, of them are. Half. Yeah, yeah. Seventy-five aren't. Yeah. So and uh, what is the delta between like a, once the uh, kernel patches are accepted into Linux Next and still not in the stable tree, do we pull it out to our uh, development branch or like we do wait? Yeah, it's a great question. So whenever I do a rebase, so five three is coming out this weekend. Um, when I get back from my travel, I'll probably rebase the BMC tree on that. And I'll go and do a bit of a check for what's in Linux Next. And where I can, I'll pull the Linux Next patches into our tree instead of the, the ones we're carrying. And then the ones that are remaining on top of that will, will, will be the other tree ones. So do you, do you wait for the release, or do you keep checking the next? And So the, the way I work is I, I rebase on the stable release. I cherry pick back from Linux Next uh, everything that's in Next at that point in time. And then apply the, the remaining ones. On top. Yeah, but the next keep growing between two releases, right? So, do you do in between base a rebase of the next also, or like you wait for the next release? No, I'd, I'd release wait for the next release. Okay. Yeah, we we don't create trees based on next or anything like that. Or so when I first started, I, I was kind of um, rebasing regularly, mm -hmm. but it would create issues with reporting bugs. So I'm like, oh, here's my shower of my kernel that's broken, and I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. I rebased yesterday, so. We stopped doing that um, okay. and instead uh, only rebase every, every three months for every upstream kernel release. I'm not sure how that works for everyone else, but that works, works really well for, for us. Okay. Yeah, there's one uh, big chunk of code that uh, was not in your presentation. I was wondering what the status was. Was the JTAG subsystem? I think there were 16 uh, rounds of review on the mailing list. I don't know why that wasn't merged. Um, no, it, it just stopped. Yeah, it just something. stopped. Uh, did you? Are you the person that worked? No, on no, it? Uh, no, no. We wanted to use it. So. Um, we should we should resubmit it. I I thought it was good to go as is. It was getting nitpicked, and I thought it was ready. Um, yeah. So I'm, you know, if you want to grab the patches and resend them, uh, I'll I'll like them. Okay. So do we have a list of 
eight-speed device drivers, which are not upstream, and then, uh, do we know whether there's someone is still working on that? Um, we have a list. It's on the wiki, and it's horribly out of date. Uh, okay. I, I was going to put a link in my presentation, and then I read it, and so I didn't put them. So uh, we can create a new list. Um, there's nothing that nothing on my radar that needs to get done. Um, like, so all the all the IBM systems, the drivers that we know we need are already in the tree. Um, but I realize that we only use a subset of the twenty of the ASP chips, so. I assume there's other drivers other people want. Um, so yeah, I'll update the list on the wiki, and the wiki is editable by everyone. So please add add your things to the list and add your names against the things that that you plan on working on or your team plans on working on. Okay. Have you talked to ASPEED about getting publicly accessible data sheets without NDA? Is yes. that happening? No. No, not happening? <laughs> is, is there something that we as a community could do to persuade them to reverse uh, that decision? We could keep asking, but initially they said yes, but there was a misunderstanding. And the answer was actually no. Um, <laughs> so when, whenever, I, whenever I write code, I, I document the registers as much as possible. Um, I, I put all the defines in for all the registers, even if the driver doesn't use them and things like this. Um, in between the QMU implementation and the and the kernel, it's all the bits of hardware we have code for are very well publicly documented. Um, would it make sense to uh, put together sort of a community? Sorry, would it make sense to put together a community maintained data sheet that just aggregates all that information from various sources? Maybe for you know people who do not have access to the data sheets to just go through the public yeah, um, accessible sources and do that. I like the idea of more of accessible information. I'm not sure what we're allowed to do and what we aren't. Um, but yeah, uh, is there a, you've come across stuff where you needed access to the data sheet and you don't have it, or you know other people? Or? Well, I know the data sheet is floating. Uh, the data sheet is floating around on the internet. So oh, okay. you know anybody who's ever needed it does have it, but it seems like kind of a you know not great situation. Yeah, uh, I'll bring it up next time I talk to iSpeed. But um, also for the twenty six hundred. Yeah. Does Novasun release their data sheets? <laughs> yeah. No, currently not because we we're trying to get uh, our own advantages. So I think this is the same situation, but. Yeah, they're catching up with us. So we it would to... be a competitive advantage to publish because then people would buy a chip. <laughs> yes, no. For maybe for current generation, it is a, a it is a, yeah, a cool. good good practice. But the next generation is still uh, hidden. Oh yeah, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I was really surprised that I was allowed to publish all the ASP code, but they were happy me writing it. I guess. <laughs> So who's used QMU to boot the kernel? That's not enough hands. Um, QMU is awesome. Um, some people think that QMU is not necessary if you have hardware. I say bollocks. Uh, you can boot a kernel in QMU fast, quicker than you can TFTP it over to your hardware. Um, and setting up hardware JTAG is far more frustrating than attaching GDB to your QMU session. Um, so I highly recommend next time you have something that crashes in the kernel or next time you're trying to do some development, have a go at, at QMU. Uh, we have a really high quality model upstream um, to the point where the QMU maintainer points to the A-speed model as, as an example of what to do, uh, which is great until you're working on the A-speed model and you want an example of what to do and you've got nothing to refer to. Um, so yeah, uh, get involved. QMU has this, this really sharp learning curve and once you get over that hump, it's really easy to use. Um, if you feel like implementing a model, uh, have a chat to me. Doing I2C models is, is super easy. You, you run I2C dump on all the registers in your device, and you stick them in an array, and all of a sudden you've got a, an almost functional model for, for most drivers. Um, and you can add a little bit of smarts uh, on top of that. Um, things like this are, are super trivial. Uh, then there's more advanced things, you know, modeling Ethernet, modeling our FSI debug stuff that we're currently doing, um, all this kind of gear. Um, the, the goal with the QMU stuff was both to help low-level developers, you know, kernel U-boot, but also to help um, integration testing and, and continuous integration of the entire BMC. So 
if we have a complete model of the system, um, you can you can boot OpenBMC. And as I said yesterday, we in CI we run uh, the Romulus model all the way through to BMC ready state. And if it doesn't get there, it fails CI. So we're currently using it a little bit. Um, the next step would be to try and do a power on. And uh, we've done some experiments hooking up a PowerPC um, QEMU to a ARM QEMU and, and booting both firmwares. Um, it's kind of a work in progress. If anyone else wants to run ahead and do that for Intel platforms, that'd be cool. So yeah, QEMU's, QEMU's fun. Um, it's really useful. Jump on board. Uh, so we have we have upstream. We have the A speed, uh, sorry, the, the um the open BMC commu tree, and then we have Cedric's work. And Cedric's really good at sucking in work in progress patches and keeping up to date. It's no one's job at the moment to merge that into the open BMC commu tree. So I'd recommend looking at Cedric's. Um, but we upstream that regularly. Um, another twelve patches went out last night, so I had. GPO controller support, which is kind of a big step towards being able to do a, a simulated boot of the BMC uh, and, the, and the host, because now you can script GPO interactions um, from outside of QEMU. So yeah, hopefully one day the answer will be app get install QEMU. Um, but at the moment, go grab Cedric X3. Uh, are you still accepting uh, new patches, cherry picking from that? Uh upstream and to our dev yeah continually it never stops yeah sorry i didn't quite understand so like my, my question is like if i have something in the next and i want to pull it to our dev tree so we can just send a request for those patches yeah uh either if it's hard to backport uh -huh. backport it yourself and send the patch to the mailing list yeah if it's trivial um send me the shah and i'll cherry pick it in sure. all right thanks So I'm wondering what kind of testing has been done when you rebase to the next version? Say maybe in one or two weeks we'll have 5.3 available, right? We'll try to publish dev.5.3 tree then. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I was listening. Um, how much testing do I do? Um, I'll boot it on all the machines I have available. So I'll boot it on a Witherspoon and I'll boot it on a Romulus. So that kind of covers the the UBI-based system and the, the raw NAN um, system um, and QMU. So that's testing I do. Uh, usually when before I bump to the new one in OpenBMC, I'll send out that announcement to the mailing list. And I know you're really good at replying to those and, and running on your systems, which is great. I encourage everyone to do that. Um, yeah. If you've got ideas for more kind of automated testing and whatnot, um, continuous integration in the upstream kernel is a pretty hot topic at the moment. There's a two-day hackathon at the end of Plumbers, which is next week in, in Portugal, where we're going to do some work on, on kernel continuous integration. And so if we had more tests that made us happy with the upstream kernel um, on BMCs, you know, that they could go into that project. OK, the reason I'm asking is uh, I try to think about it. I'm not sure if anyone tried to compile some LTP test code for ARM and try to run it on BMC and uh, what the result would be. Uh, I've never played with LTP, um, but that would be cool. And if someone got that going, I'd certainly add that to kind of my suite of things I do before I push to to um, to, to bump in OpenBMC. Yeah. Have you played with it at all? Uh, I, I tried. I I went through some like uh, for CPU scheduling and memory management code. It's written by C. It looks like it's pretty general, but I, I haven't tried because I have to copy that to some meta layer. And create the recipe file. That's why I'm asking if anyone in the community have tried that. Yeah, um, I think that you can build LTP as part of build root. Um, so I sh no one has a layer for doing LTP as part of Yocto. Um, I'm not a Yocto person. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, maybe we can follow up later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's chat about later. That's, yeah. I, I like where you're going. Thank you. Is, the, is there something uh, how to for patching uh, new drivers uh, to, for the ooh, you helped us at the beginning to to do that and now customers or ODMs are asking us and we have our own how to that based on all, all kinds of things but is there something that well documented so for submitting patches to the tree yes for the yes first for uh, new drivers mainly yeah um 
if I, I don't know how to use my web browser, sorry. No, it's gone. Um, on OpenBMC GitHub, so open, uh, github.com, openbmc, slash Linux, slash wiki, there's a bunch of tips and tricks and development process there. Um, I recommend you use that. I try and keep that up to date. It hasn't been touched in a little while, so if you find emissions or information that doesn't look right, get in touch and I can update it. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see patches from your, your ODMs and whatnot. Um, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is that it? All right, I'll be around the rest of the week. Um, come chat to me. Um, happy to have discussions about whatever else you want to talk about. Thanks for listening.